Hi YouTube, welcome to ENT Bytes. Today's ENT Byte is about the pinna, also known as the auricle, uh, which is part of the external ear. So why is the pinna important? Uh, so the pinna is uh, a cartilaginous part of the external ear that uh, protrudes from the sides of the head. Uh, its function is to funnel sound into the external acoustic meatus and facilitates hearing. Uh, because they protrude from the head, uh, they are quite commonly injured, uh, for example, through a pinna laceration or through a pinna hematoma. And now imagine it's late at night and uh, you're on call. Uh, you may need to describe the extent of a laceration to someone over the phone, uh, and therefore knowing the anatomy is important for this. Now let's look at the external features of the pinna. Um, we'll start with the lobule. Um, at the inferior part, which is often pierced uh, and lacks any cartilage. Um, next, the rim of the pin is formed by the helix, uh, and uh, just inside to this is an anti-helix. Near to the attachment to the uh, face is the cross of the helix, where it begins, then curves around the rim and ends in the tail of the helix. The antihelix has a superior and inferior crust, and in between these is the triangular fossa. Between the antihelix and the helix is the scaphoid fossa. Then looking closer to the um, external meatus, uh, you have the concha, um, which forms uh, shapes them into a shell. You have the external acoustic meatus, which then passes to the, uh, the middle and inner ear. Just anterior to the external acoustic meatus is the tragus, which you can feel on yourself, covering the, um, uh, the entrance. And opposite the tragus is the antitragus. For a bonus fun fact, this is the Darwin's or auricular tubercle. Uh, which is thought to be a remnant of uh, a prominence that's seen in the earlier um, apes and primates. The structure of the pinna comes from cartilage, uh, which is then surrounded by perichondrium, which contains uh, the blood vessels that uh, keep the cartilage alive. Uh, then outside of this is the skin. Uh, this is important because um, if there is a collection of blood deep to the perichondrium, it can starve the cartilage um, of uh, its blood supply uh, and lead to necrosis uh, and a deformity uh, known as a cauliflower ear. Now let's have a look at the arterial supply of the pinna. Um, so this it comes from the external carotid artery. Um, in the form of the superficial temporal artery, anterior to the pinna, and posteriorly the posterior auricular artery. Now the sensory innervation of the pinna uh, inferiorly is from the greater auricular nerve uh, from C2 and C3, and this includes the ear lobule. Uh, superiorly, uh, innervation is from the auricular temporal branch of the mandibular nerve, a branch of the trigeminal nerve. Uh, and posterior to the pinna um, supplies from the lesser occipital nerve, uh, also from C2 and C3. Within the um, concha and also around the external acoustic meatus, there are some fibres from uh, the vagus uh, and the facial nerve. Uh, this is why in Ramsey Hunt syndrome, uh, there may be blisters that form uh, in this area. Now for the lymphatic drainage of the pinna. Uh, so the anterior surface of the pinna is divided into a superior and inferior half. Uh, the superior half drains to the preauricular lymph nodes um, in the parotid, and the inferior half drains to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. Uh, the whole of the posterior pinna drains to the mastoid lymph nodes. 
This is important because a patient with a pathological lymph node, um, for example in the parotid, uh, may have had um, a cancer in the pinna. That was the source. That concludes today's ENT Bite. Thank you for watching and uh, if you enjoyed it click like or subscribe for further videos.